Okay, hi guys. Uh, we are on to our next lesson, lesson 4.2b. Um, this is going to be about uh, clone stamp. Uh, we're building on what we learned yesterday. Um, and we're going to be creating a graphic uh, with this clone, uh, so with this uh, C star. Um, and we're going to be doing a very similar uh, idea, but we're going to be blending this um, tutorial with uh, the idea of layers. Okay, um, so when you click on this, we're going to continue where we left off with this tutorial. Okay, so click on this, it's going to open up a graphic, and that graphic looks like this. Um, and what we're going to be doing is essentially the same idea as what we did before, which is using the clone stamp to, to target an area, uh, and then take from that, and then and then draw into uh, a further away uh, area, um, or a different area. <laughs> Um, and what we're going to be doing that's different on this uh, tutorial is that we're going to be learning about layers. Um, and we're going to be using layers and the clone stamp in conjunction um, to to make things look a little more realistic. Now, probably the most, one of the most useful and powerful um, uh, parts of Photoshop is the ability to use layers. Um, and the way I always like to explain layers is if you remember... Uh, this thing, okay, an overhead projector. An overhead projector uses these kind of transparency sheets, okay? And if I had, so for example, if I had a bunch of transparencies like this and I had a, you know, a number of things drawn in each layer, because they're transparent, I'd be able to see through each one. Layers works like that, okay? So we're going to be using a number of layers and you, Im if you imagine them kind of stacked on, on top of or in front of um, your, your sort of background image, that's sort of the best way to kind of think about it. Now, if you look at your layers palette, which is over here, what you're looking at is um, kind of a profile or a side view. So this is your bottom layer. If I create a new layer, it's going to stack on, on top okay, of that other layer. If I duplicate a layer, say I say hit this and duplicate it, okay, this is another layer on top of that layer. So if I go and I move this, you can see that's that second layer in the background. And this one here has got this sort of... Um, checkerboard, like this gray and white checkerboard um, uh, kind of pattern. That means that there's nothing there. That's how they show transparency in Photoshop. So what you'll see here, I'm not sure if you can see it, maybe I'll make it a little bigger by going palette options, and I'll just go to a larger thumbnail here. Okay, so you can see here, okay, that there's nothing there, and that's how it's showing you that this is empty. On this layer. If I turn this layer off, you'll be able to see through the background. That's why I can see what's back here because this has nothing in it, right? When I move this here, I can't see behind it because there's something, this image in front. But when I move it out of the way, I can see to what's behind it, just like stacked sheets of paper, okay? The difference is that this is a transparency and we'll learn why that's valuable in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on layer one. So let's let's do this together. Starting where you are, you're going to have just this this graphic open. You're going to create a new layer by clicking here on this uh, little new page icon. Okay, and that's going to create a new layer. Now you can a couple things. You can double click on your name here on the layer name to rename it. Be careful not to click here in the blank area because this actually opens up some properties, your layer style properties. Okay, so just be aware of where you're clicking. If I click this area or this area or this area, it does different things. Okay, so if I want to rename this, I can just click here and rename it whatever I want it to be renamed. Okay, all right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this C star and moving it back here, but we're not going to do it on this layer, and I'll show you why. Um, if I did with our clone stamp, which is what we learned yesterday, if I went like this and I drew my clone stamp uh, C star over here, okay, there's my C star, I can't do anything with it. And that looks really big, right? As things get further away, they get smaller, just like with the road, those uh, dashed lines got smaller and closer together. Um, things get further, get smaller as they get, they move further into the distance. But I can't change anything about this because this is my background image. So let's go back in my history at one step. And on my new layer here, I'm going to choose my clone stamp. And in my settings here, I'm going to make sure that where it says sample, by default it should be current layer. But if I change it to current and below, OK, 
again where it says sample. What that means is it's going to sample from the current layer and anything below that. And what that means is while I'm on this layer, now notice when I'm on a layer, it gets highlighted. Okay. While I'm on layer one here, if I hold Option and I say, okay, I want to, or Alt on a PC, and I click on my C star, you notice that it's selecting from this layer. Even though I'm on layer one, it's using current and below, and it's it's sampling from below. So I can now draw here onto my onto my layer one from my background layer. Now, why is that important? Well, if you remember, I mentioned that this is all transparent. So now I've got, when I turn the visibility off from my background, you can see that I've got this as a separate element from my original background, okay? And what that means is I can now do things like I can move this, okay? I can move it independently of this layer that's in the background. Now that means I can do things like transform. So I'm gonna go edit, transform, and there's a couple of transforms here. We're gonna go to scale. And when I do that, I can actually just pick up a corner and I can drag it. Now, in uh, previous versions of Illustrator, so if you're one of the people using an older version of Illustrator, you have to hold Shift to constrain it. Otherwise, what will happen is it'll do this. It'll squish in one way or the other. But in current versions of Photoshop, they've switched it. So by default, this is going to stay constrained, Okay, which is usually what you want, Okay, meaning it doesn't get squished in any way. Okay, so there, now I've, I've you know, made this a little bit smaller. There's a couple way, me, ways for me to set this transformation. I can either click here on the check mark, or I can just double click in this area, or I can hit the enter key on my keyboard. All right, now because this is two separate layers, I can still move this around just like I did before. Okay, so I have control over how that looks. And say I got a little too much, I've got like this kind of shadow here that is repeated. Um, right there. So I might actually erase that. So I'm going to zoom in, go to my zoom tool, and move in a little bit here. And I'm going to go to my erase tool, which is the E on my keyboard, or the eraser tool. And I'm just going to erase that. I'm going to use a soft brush. Uh, go to my uh, hardness slider, drag that down to zero, and maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, and I'm just going to erase this away softly because whenever you see anything duplicated in an image, that's usually a bit of a dead giveaway that it's been photoshopped. Okay, so you want to be careful about that. Be careful with your edges as well. You notice that when I first did that, when I had a hard edge, um, as soon as you see these kind of lines, that's a pretty clear indication that that's been photoshopped. So you want to avoid that sort of thing as well. Okay, so being careful to you know, soften that edge, soften that um, uh, eraser edge there. Okay, double click my um, zoom tool to go back to 100%, I'm going to zoom out, command minus to zoom out. Okay, now I could go in with my eraser tool and I could clean up as much of, a, of, of that as I'd like. E on my keyboard, and there's a keyboard shortcut for any brush that you're using. The square bracket, there's two square brackets, a left and a right. The left square bracket will make it smaller, the right square bracket will make it bigger. So I'm going to go kind of about that big with a soft brush, and I'm just going to, make it a little smaller, I'm just going to erase away anything I don't need. Okay, now be careful when you're using this kind of tool because notice that when I did that, I've got like, I don't know, was that 12 or 8, 9 eraser um, uh, tool movements in a row. And if I did a whole bunch of these in a row, very quickly I would lose my ability to go back in my, so say I went, you know, a whole bunch of erasers. Notice I'm losing all of my, you know, I'm, I'm slowly getting further down um, with all of these eraser bits, meaning that I only have a certain number of history states that I can go back. So if I did like a hundred of these, I wouldn't go be able to go back in my history far enough. So just be aware of that. Okay. All right. I'm going to make this hardness around here and I'm just going to erase away anything I don't need, but that looks, you know, pretty decent to me. Okay, move tool, I can move that around as I want. And I think that looks pretty tight. Um, if I wanted to, I could then duplicate this layer by going right click, duplicate layer. And then there's another, like Photoshop has a bunch of ways to do everything. So I could actually just drag this layer down to the new um, um, icon there and it'll duplicate it. Command Z undo. I could also go Command J, I think, is a duplicate, right? Command J is a keyboard shortcut for duplicate, or I can right click and say duplicate layer. So there's like a lot of ways to um, do things in Photoshop. So now I've got another version of this. And remember, these are transparent everywhere except these two things. So that's going to overlap, right? 
Okay, so I'm going to take this guy here, and I'm going to put him further away, and I'm going to go Command T. Okay, remember that I mentioned there's there's a Edit Transform, okay, which is Command T, or I can go Transform Scale, but I'm just going to go Command T, which is a keyboard shortcut for any of those um, transform tools. I'm going to make that one smaller and further back, and then I'm going to either double click, click on my um, checkbox, or hit Enter on my keyboard. To set the transformation, and there we go. I'm gonna put that. I don't know, maybe, maybe there. Okay, and there you have it. Okay, save that. So file, save as. You're gonna save a PSD, okay, which is in your Photoshop document. That's gonna be your um, authoring file, and your authoring file is gonna keep all of your layers, okay. And then you're gonna save a PSD, and you're gonna save a JPEG as well. Um, when you're done that, put your JPEG on your uh, website, on your blog, or your portfolio, I should say, um, and just write a quick description of what we did. Some of the tools that we talked about, we talked about layers, so explain how that is important. The clone stamp again, you're gonna specifically talk about how with the clone stamp, uh, you have the ability to use the current and below and what that does. Um, talk about the transform tool, the eraser tool, and anything else that you thought was important, um, you can put that into your, uh, into your uh, portfolio. You should also start cleaning up your portfolio, making sure that there are um, there's nothing in or on your portfolio that uh, shouldn't be there. So if you still have any of the default images or default pages, clean that up. Um, let's get into organizing our website so that it looks um, professional and tight. Okay, that's it for now. Save your work and upload to your portfolio. When you're done, put your portfolio link into Google Classroom. All right. Good luck. Bye.